good night and a happy emancipation day uh jamaicans and anybody else who may be tuning in from different parts of the world and uh, all over the jamaican diaspora and uh jokingly i could say that the wider diaspora of the united church emancipation day is a day that we use to celebrate the time when we were released from slavery those who are of the african tradition and african heritage and uh, as you well know years ago after the period of colonialism those who were uh, doing various bits of work both in the West Indies and parts of the upper Northern American region tended to start to unfortunately enslave many people from Africa. And through that time period until the 30s of the 19th century, we eventually got some relief and uh, from now till then we have celebrated this day it actually runs very close to the time when in jamaica we also celebrate our independence which is a different time period when the things in relation to the united kingdom and their governance over different parts of the commonwealth started to see many of the nations wanted to try to rule themselves and come up with ways that they could uh, organize themselves better as countries and uh, independent or sovereign nations. But what struck me about this time period, which in Jamaica and probably in other parts of the Commonwealth and especially the West Indies or the Caribbean, we tend to call emancipence, is that God has a way of emancipating even our own souls, even our own minds, and changing bad thoughts, habits, and behaviors to the ways that are Christ-like. When it is, he has transformed us with his glorious light through the Holy Spirit. But before we get to the continuation of that thought, I wanted to read a few bits of chapters and a bit of scripture and um, just reference and speak very clearly as as short as i can but as clearly as i can because you see moses had a similar issue he wanted to free the people of israel when he was a prince of egypt and in the court he saw the problems that were happening with his people and over time he actually unfortunately killed them and uh, he went into exile, and while there in the desert for 40 years, he got a revelation from God at a mountain where he saw a burning bush that was not being consumed by the fire. And God showed to him some things about who he was, the God who is the I Am, and the one who was capable of releasing his uh, nation from slavery. And uh, during that time period, he decided to come back and speak to the Pharaoh in Egypt to release the people of Israel. Of course, we know how the story goes. He did not release them until, of course, a few plagues came on that nation. And it is on the last and most deadly plague, which we will uh, reference here, that the things in relation to what God represented was finally re revealed. Not only did God say and uh, state before Moses went there that he would not be listened to and Pharaoh's heart would be hardened, but he said that the reason he was trying to do these things was to glorify the God of the earth himself. He was doing these things to show that he was the one who should be followed and worshipped. Let me uh, reference Exodus 12, 26. Because you see, many times we go through time periods in our lives where we struggle, or we have a lot of pain and uh, issues in, in terms of how we feel about 
strife or suffering or hardships. And did you not know that the reason God presents it to you is so that he can, through you, reveal himself? In Exodus 12, verse 26, it says, And it shall come to pass, when your children shall say unto you, What mean you by this service? That you shall say, It is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover, who passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt, when he smote the Egyptians, and delivered our houses, and the people bowed the head, and worshipped. No. If you did not know the period of the Passover in the Jewish tradition is a representation of that last night when they were in Egypt and the angel of death came and killed every firstborn, both humans and even cattle in the land. However, the people who were the slaves, who were Egypt, um, Israelites, were in the area of Goshen and through Moses' words and understanding from God, they decided to put the blood of Allah on the lintel posts and the areas to cover where they stayed. And so the angel of death passed over and no person in, in that area was um, harmed. They were all saved and they went out with great goodness and uh, even the Egyptians started to realize that this is this is the point where we have to let these people go. And they gave them some offerings of their clothing and their jewelry and their gold and the treasures that they possessed. No. After all of that, and even after a point when Moses had to save the people of Israel again by allowing him to pass over a uh, sea while an army of chosen chariots were running behind them from Pharaoh's um, entourage, they started to still get into a problem in relation to the things of um, how they view themselves and how they view the world. Because you see, they were in slavery for over 400 years. Sounds um, reminiscent or um, repetitive to what I said about the emancipation period, right? They were in slavery for over 400 years. Let me project um, Exodus 12 again so you can see something else. And so their minds were shot and, and they had a, a weak understanding of who they were in God. Exodus 12 says, Now the surgery of the children of Israel who dwelt in Egypt was 430 years. So imagine if every day you got to and you felt you were owned by somebody else. If if you got up and nothing you possessed was yours. If if you if if you walked around and you were always mistreated or spoken less of. Or if as time went on, you you saw people who were around you who had things that you did not have. Or you had a way where everything you were doing, you presumed that in order to get it, it will be given to you by those who are lords over you. And so now their minds had to be changed. It was needed to be changed so much that an entire generation went through the promised land, all died apart from Joshua and Caleb, and the next generation 40 years again afterwards when they went into Egypt were the ones who went into the promised land that God had said would be given to Abraham and his descendants. They did not want to go into the land because they thought the people there were bigger than them, had more organized armies. As one of the bits of scripture says in the Deuteronomy and the Numbers that they saw giants or the children of Anakin, only to find out when they went in and started to survey and almost start some of the wars that people there were afraid of them. And they thought that they were the grasshoppers and that the children of Israel were the giants. Now, it's very easy 
to have a warped view of who you are or what you can be if you go through four centuries of demeaning um, uh, you know things done to you and uh, it is very reminiscent is it not of how many of our people now uh, view and, and behave and and portray themselves because of all the things that happened before we got here there are many different theories and studies that have been done on how people's minds have been messed up and they're more prone to different sorts of diseases and conditions and how the very way that people organize themselves in culture has been influenced very much by that transatlantic trade that happened years ago and so what will be your difference? Will you, will you know who you are in Christ? Will you still, as Bob Marley once said, uh, proclaim yourself, uh, you know, an independent set of people, but still need emancipation from your mental slavery? Who are you going to see as your master? Will it be the king, the god of the earth? Or will it be the things are around that are around you and your circumstances that you will allow to dictate what you can do, where you can go, what you can achieve, what your children will see, and how you will do life. God calls for a different sort of reason. He calls for a new way of thinking and a new way of life. He's asking you to change your minds to follow his commandments enough that you realize that you have been made free from the bondages of sin. Romans 12 verses 1 to 2 says this, I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice wholly acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may be prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Transformed by the renewing of your mind. When the Holy Spirit comes into the life of the believer, you come with the baggage of the things that you brought before you were saved. You have issues and habits that were formed. Yes, the Holy Spirit is there, but you have to now tap into what God has given you to allow your soul, which has a mind, will, ambitions, thoughts, and desires that allow you to then change the way that you move in your environment and cause your body and the things that you do to change the term that is used for transforming and uh, renewing right there in verse 2 of romans is the term metamorph or metamorphosis is a term the way that we get the word metamorphosis which means a change a flip in how we see and do things a greater understanding of our purpose and our meaning the apostle paul says that the very way in which we do the things that we do must be because we realize we have been put here for a specific type of workmanship we all have been predestined to something in relation to what god intends but if we did not know this and did not know that god knew you before you were formed in the womb and he has ordained you for specific things then one we probably wouldn't even come to god at all and think our life is meaningless and two when we do come we still meander along just like the people of israel did for 40 years and 
some did not see the promise to what they can see to God. Matthew chapter 9, verse 17, uh, goes into something in relation to what Jesus wanted to, to see about these things, about how it is that when you have been forgiven of your sins and come to him for change in the KJV, the references to this section of Matthew chapter 9 says that there will be signs of a change in how you move and do what you're doing. So, verse 17 of Matthew chapter 9 says, Neither do men put new wine into old bottles, else the bottles break and the wine run it out and the bottles perish. But they put new wine into new bottles and both are preserved. So you see, God has been putting something new inside of you. He has been giving you new thoughts, new desires, things following commands that will give you new wills and ambitions. But if you allow the spirit which is energizing and invigorating to be there, but your body, it's the old wine skin, then the, the spirit will just get dry and empty and immature and uh, it will leak out. It will be almost like the parable where he said the sower comes and either the birds come and pluck the word of God from you or you allow the, the cares and the ills of this world to choke the life out of you and you do not reach to the fullness of the destiny of what God intends. So what will it be? Will you take the time to know more about God so that this new wine that is put in you starts to go through your soul to move to your body to create a new wineskin? Or will you waste the opportunity that you've been given so that the wine runs out and the bottles break and both perish? You are a spiritual being inside of a physical vessel. You contain a treasure that is way beyond the things that you can fathom in this temporary um, time period of life that you are now living. You are seated with God in heavenly places, according to the Apostle Paul. You have been given a mandate of things to do on this earth that will assist to glorify his name and bring forth things that uh, you know, people would be shocked by. So if you allow the Passover to come and a new way and words to come to you, but it does not transform your will and your emotion and your habits. And it does not cause you to be emancipated, then uh, you, you would not have understood or stepped into the gift of which you have been given. Jesus also said that the kingdom of heaven was like uh, many things. Let me project that section of the scriptures and then we will close. The kingdom of heaven, God said, reading from verse 44, is like unto treasure hid in a field. The which when a man had found, he hid hide it, and for joy, therefore go it and sell it all that he had and buy it in the field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls, who when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net that was cast into the sea and gathered of every kind, which when it was full, they drew to shore and sat down and gathered the good into vessels but cast the bad away. So shall it be at the end of the world. 
the angels shall come forth and seven wicked from among the just and shall cast them into the furnace of fire there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth so god is casting a net to gather those who are of his kind so that at the end of this age you hopefully will sit on his right hand as the sheep and not on the left as the goat the reference to this is from matthew chapter 25. he's looking for people who will hide that treasure enough because they know the field that will give them the treasure of the things they desire in god is worth more than all that they previously possessed. He's looking for people who are seeking and doing things in life, but realize that one great prize is worth more than the other things that they may be out there doing or in commerce with. God is trying to show you the greatness of who he is to the way that you take what he has given you and put it back out into the earth. God is trying to show you that if you are now realizing that he, as David said in the Psalms, as Jesus himself said, and as Peter said, knows that God is seated at the right hand of the Father. A symbol of power, strength, and authority. Then um, if you know are going to be called to be sheep at the end of the age on his right hand, do you know how glorious it is to be seated in preference to be heirs to the inheritance of the kingdom of heaven. You have all who decide to choose him been seeking for something, just like the person who the parable says is seeking pearls for commerce. But God also has been seeking you he has been seeking you before you were even born. And when you went and started to traverse through your life, he now wants to do something to change how you view yourself and where you can be in your life. If you are looking for a change in your life, a freedom from the issues and the problems of this world. The only solution, as it has always been for millennia, is the God of the earth who has revealed himself in the form of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You have issues with self-esteem. You may have issues with anger, unforgiveness, malice, envy. Always looking for something, just like the person who was seeking the different pearls. Trying to find something that will make them find some meaning in their life. Striving and striving and looking for something that, that will make them feel whole again. And the truth is that God said that it was already finished. On the cross, he died on your behalf to lay down all the sins of the world so that when you come to him, all, all you have to do is now borrow into his righteousness. Start to follow God. If you, tonight, wish to find him, or rather, realize that he has been always seeking you, then let us pray 
to consecrate and commit our relationship with the one who is bringing something new. The way that reveals the kingdom of heaven. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for who you are. The king of the earth, the God of all things, the one who has released the Israelites from slavery, millennia. The one who through the nature of the poetic verses in Psalms has also revealed that you are seated at the right hand of the Father and all authority is in your hands. The one who came on the earth to show us that you are going to give us something so new that we have to start you know, adapting to a metamorphosis and a transformation that will look foreign and peculiar to the world because those who conform to the world are actually doing the things of the one who is your enemy. Help us, God, to seek you so much that the Christ-like fruit starts to reveal your kingdom in us emancipate us from mental slavery heal us from the wounds and the pains of the past and bring us closer to the fullness of the freedom from the tangents of sin thank you god that you still have emancipatory Thank you, everybody, for joining us for Tuesday Night Bible Study. I am, as ever, Johnny and Jeremy and Alcock. We are the Elshire United Church. That was a special Emancipation Day message. I generally have a longer session when there's Tuesday Night Bible Study, but I, I decided to be as brief as I could to talk about things in relation to emancipation. Next week, we uh, are going to go back to our regularly scheduled program, I guess you could call it, and... Uh, speak mainly from a reference from second peter chapter one that talks about how peter james and john saw jesus on the mount of transfiguration and uh, what it is that shows us that god is really truth right what what is what why should we even listen to these apostles? Are they giving us fables and uh, the same things that we are repeating verbatim like brainwashed people? First, Second Peter 1 verse 16 says, For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. <laughs> I'll explain a little bit more, uh, obviously, next week, this time. Please remember we have Tuesday Night Bible Sunday every, seven, uh, every Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. And we also have normal worship service every Sunday, uh, streaming on our Facebook page every 9 a.m. The other activities of the church do continue. Remember, young people, that there is VBS coming up between the 10th and the 12th of August. And all the other activities in relation to men's and women's fellowship and the other auxiliaries of the church. And of course, youth fellowship, which tends to happen during church or a little bit after, still continue. I hope you're having a great uh, summer period so far. And I hope it is that this emancipation time causes you to reflect and know that God is so real, He's, he's so there. And majestic that you have to come closer to him in a new way of life he does not save you for you to stay in the same old roses and ways that you were listen to him hear his voice crying out to you 
to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice that will be pleasing so that you will make some things that are closer to the good, excellent, and perfect will of God. See you all next week. Thank you. Amen.